What's up guys, Coach Gagalione here. We're at Gagalione Strength in Farmingdale, New York, Strong Island. We've got Larry Williams here. And today we're talking about the deadlift, okay? And uh, I know Larry's, uh, the deadlift has a special place in my heart because that was, uh, was my first time I ever pulled 700. Larry walked through our doors. I was feeling really happy and then he had to pull it for a triple at 19. And, <laughs> and then that's when I hung up my stuff and I just let him do all the, <laughs> break all the records and all that. But that's a story for another day. But today we're gonna show you how to do the deadlift uh, we're gonna go through the setup, the execution, and some of the competition rules. So like all the lifts, we always say better start to better finish. So everything starts with how you place your feet and how you approach the bar. So basically what we wanna do, and actually, you know, Larry's got some, some socks on with the, and he's got his logo is actually basically right on his midfoot. And especially in the squat and in, and in the deadlift, you always want the barbell over your midfoot. That's where you're gonna have your best balance point and you're gonna allow yourself to, to produce the most force. So once Larry's heading up to the bar, he's gonna to wanna to make sure that the barbell is directly over his midfoot. Uh, if you just bring your shins to the bar. If you bring your shins all the way to the bar, that's gonna to be too close. Just bend your knees for me and just kind of bump the bar forward. And what, that's what's gonna happen. If you are too close to the bar initially, when you kind of come down to bend your knees, it's gonna create some lateral movement and it's gonna create the barbell coming forward. If you set up too far away, like he is now, the barbell is already forward, it's already over past your midfoot. So by set, setting your, centering yourself, under the bar and placing the barbell over your midfoot, that's gonna give you the best starting point for most balance and the most transfer of force. So that's, we're gonna start off with that good setup over the midfoot. So a lot of people ask like how wide you should put your feet, how wide you should put your hands. And this is something you're gonna to need to experiment with. But in general, if you're a wider person, you're gonna need, if you're a wider waist, you're gonna to need to bring your feet out a little wider. And the wider your feet are, you're basically gonna to have to accommodate with your hands being a little wider. If you are too close, and you can just pretend like you have a close grip. This is gonna kinda of collapse his chest and it's gonna make it very hard to lock out. This may also cause some grip problems because the bar is gonna to wanna to kinda of twist out of your hands. If you go too wide, like a snatch grip, you're gonna to have to pull the bar extra range of motion. So you wanna kinda of grip it somewhere in between just outside your legs. That's gonna be the optimal grip for both performance and health. So we're not overdoing the range of motion and we're not putting ourselves in a bad position by gripping it too close. So from here, our feet are set. We're gonna be rooting our feet in the ground, just like we would in a squat. It's not gonna be as aggressive because the stance is not as, as wide as a squat. We wanna make sure we're gripping the ground and we're starting to activate our hips here. And then Larry can kind of bend at the waist and start to in initiate his grip and grab the bar. I like to really hinge backward and keep the balance of my midfoot. And I'm trying to keep a neutral spine, so once again, I'm not hyper, um, extended and I'm not rounded. So hinge, grab the bar. And my right hand is my underhand, so I always pull with a mixed grip. And with my underhand, I'm maybe an inch or so um, wider than my overhand. Not to prevent the bar from helicoptering. Hmm. Yeah. Can you show what that looks like just standing? Sure. So oh, uh, just, just, just yeah, just right. Just so supinate one hand, yeah. So this is gonna be this is gonna be a natural uh, when you supinate. This is pronated grip. This is a supinated grip. Um, there's gonna be a natural carrying angle here when you supinate, and so that's why again, just for mecha for mechanicals, this is gonna be a little bit like slightly wider, um, and that's something you're gonna play with as you get more advanced. But if you kind of naturally just kind of figure out which is more comfortable, you'll kind of naturally have that figure out that grip yourself. Okay, you don't need to overthink it too much. So. Tell us um, when you're, when are you breathing, when are you starting to gather your tightness? Because you t tend to set up very quickly on a deadlift, which not everyone necessarily should. Uh, just like with the squat, if you kind of, you don't want to necessarily grip and rip your deadlift and have it be sloppy. So you don't want to sacrifice speed for form, but I know you've kind of developed a very quick setup and it works very well for you. Can you just tell us like what's going on as you're like pulling yourself down? Like, when are you breathing? When are you engaging your lats? And, kind of talking about that. So just like, cause your setup is very quick. So let's slow it down and kind of break it down. Like where, when you are you breathing, when you start to engage your lats and all that good stuff. Okay. Sure. So when I first started out, I would psych myself out by overthinking the deadlift. I would spend too much time hovering over the bar and I would take too long in the bottom position. You know, I, I see it all the time on Instagram, YouTube, yanking the bar. Practice pulls. Spend an hour, yeah, down there. You know, spend too long down here. So I try to get it over as quickly as possible before I have enough time to psych myself out, especially when going for a PR. So at the top, this is where I'm doing all my bracing. Big air in the belly, lats, 
and I'm making sure I'm pulling my scapula back and down and maintaining this position and the tightness in my core when I push the core. Oh, so I'm going to freeze here? Yeah. So Larry's trying to get his arms as long as possible. That's going to shorten the range of motion of the pull and that's going to make him very efficient. I just want you to shrug up as high as you can. So can you see the difference in how much longer he's going to have to pull versus down here? So that's going to make him more efficient. It's going to make a more stable shoulder and that's going to create for a more efficient lockout. Okay. So now he's getting, starting to get his brace. He's starting to get his lats engaged and then he's going to start to come down to the bars and continue. Keep talking on what, what's going on. Right, so after I'm braced and my arms are struck down, I'm making sure my elbows are locked, triceps flexed. You don't want to flex your bicep, but that's a great way to have a bicep tear. So you don't have to worry about the underhand being vulnerable to a bicep tear as long as your tricep is flexed and your arm is locked and straight. You do not tricep and making sure the arms are hooks, okay, that's gonna make sure that we keep the bicep nice and safe. Now let's say you are a recreational lifter uh, and you're not a competitive power lifter. There's nothing wrong if you want to pull double overhand with straps. Nothing wrong with that. That's totally fine. Uh, regardless of some internet commenter says it's cheating, if you're not a competitive power lifter and you're just deadlifting for the sake of deadlifting and gaining strength, there's nothing wrong if you want to pull the straps or you can use a double overhand grip or a hook grip. Um, again, unless you have super, that's a, that's a different uh, video for a different day, but just know that uh, if you are not a competitive lifter or if you have a bicep injury or something like that, nothing wrong with using straps. but. So we're gonna make sure, regardless of the variation or the grip you're using, you wanna make sure your arms are hooks, and if, you're, if your triceps engaged, your lats are engaged, making sure the arms nice and long, and the, the elbows extended, that's gonna put you in a very safe position where you can lift a lot of weight and also get the benefit of the deadlift. So as we're uh, approaching the bar, just tell us what you're doing with your grip and your breath and all that good stuff. Sure, so I'm bracing at the top. Core's being braced, <coughs> making sure I'm hyperextended, um, ribcage stacked in my pelvis. Perfect. And from there, I'm ready to pull. So can you just tell us, a, we kind of heard that little click. Can you talk about like pulling the slack out and just creating tension on the bar and like with that, because I know you do, you do it very fast, but you do do it. So right. as far as like creating tension on the bar and using the ball ball for leverage to kind of pull yourself down. Right. So when you went after you brace at the top, you're here. Once you have a real tight grip here and you're creating tension, you can see the bar sort of levitating off the ground, right? And it may look in my videos that I'm just gripping and ripping and I'm not creating tension and I'm just sort of yanking on the bar. It's happening very fast. It's just happening quickly. So as long as you can do it under control, you want to go as quick as you can, as controlled cool. as you can, right? And like Larry said, you don't want to be spending an hour in the bottom because you're going to lose, the longer you stay down there, you're going to lose tightness. You're not going to be able to create that tension for that long. So as you get more proficient, you can be more like Larry and get in position and once you're in, you're in position, you go, you're exploding. And that's why you can use that, utilize that stretch reflex, get under really quickly and kind of explode through. Since the deadlift starts from the bottom, it is a dead stop lift. You need to kind of break inertia. So any way you can kind of develop some speed and kind of get generate some power off the floor, that's gonna help you accelerate through the top and through the range of motion, okay? For beginning lifters, we recommend set up as you know, quickly as you can under control. Don't rush it, but don't take your sweet time down there either. So you gotta find that happy medium. So once you get more proficient, you get more comfortable in your setup, you can start to pick up the pace a little bit. Just make sure you don't rush, okay? So now let's talk about the ascent a little bit. So one exercise that we like to do, uh, and sometimes I'll even do this as a warm up, uh, just to kind of uh, show the positions of the lift, we like doing a pause deadlift. It's really good for building technique, and if you're a beginning lifter, it's a great way, a great drill to actually learn the movement. So once we're actually set up in position, uh, we're gonna just get set up and freeze. So once we kind of learned a good setup, we got the lats engaged, a good brace, and we're rooting the feet in the floor, he's pulling the slack out. We're just gonna leg press into the ground, use the quads to push it up, and then just pause at the knees. And this is gonna make sure that, so if Larry's lats are not engaged and the bar starts to drift out in front of him, it's gonna be very hard for him to hold. Now from here, he could drive his hips forward, squeeze his glutes, and extend to the lockout. Let's put it back now. So let's say if Larry did a poor job of, just relax for a second, of engaging and just pretend like you're holding the bar. Okay. Yeah, so if he starts to round over and the bar gets out in front of him, the pause is going to magnify the problem and the fault that much more. It's gonna feel pretty crappy. Uh, so this is a great way, again, to learn those positions because sometimes the deadlift happens so fast, it's kind of hard to drill those positions. By doing the pauses, you can pause for a one count, three count, even a five count when you're learning, and then kind of go through it. So let's go through that one more time, just show the positions again. 
And when you're in that, that so we're in a leg press to the knees. And again, so he's nice and engaged. It's the barbell is nice over his midfoot, and he's going to drive the hips forward, engage the glutes. He's not overextending the top. Rib cage stacked over the pelvis, nice and long. And then we're going to bring the bar down. In the case of a competition or a competitive lifter, uh, there's only one command you really need to worry about. The, uh, just make sure that once the once the bar starts to come up, it must continue to come up. So if you do, if you do like to do some practice pulls and stuff, just make sure the bar does not lift off the ground, because that will count as an attempt. So once Larry lifts the, lifts the bar, it's a lockout. It's gonna come all the way up. So that gets all, but so now let's say Larry's in a competition, the head judge is gonna give him a down signal. From here, he's not allowed to let go of the bar. He can't drop. So we recommend practice how you play. Don't drop your deadlifts in training. Uh, just make sure you bring it under control. You don't need to bring it down super slow, but you can't slam it down. Don't bend your arms. Don't be a tough guy. Just bring it down under control. Make sure you get those white lights. So once he's fully erect, the hips, his chest is up, his, his, le his legs are, so his quads and his glutes are flexed. So we want to make sure we don't have soft knees. We want to make sure the hips are fully extended and his chest is up. He's going to get a down signal. And he's going to make sure his hands stay on the bar until the weight's on the ground. If you let go at any point before the weight's on the ground, that's going to be a no lift, okay? Now, that being said, uh, if you are on a competitive lifter, and for whatever reason, let's say, like, you know, if you want to drop the bar for whatever reason, if you have bumpers and stuff, and maybe the lowering phase hurts your back, and you're not a competitive lifter, that's kind of up to you. Uh, but we recommend, again, practice how you play. So have a good eccentric, control it on the way down, and make sure that you're kind of practicing those competition commands, okay? Uh, let's say you're a beginner starting out, you could also elevate the weights off blocks. You could start in a rack, if maybe you're not strong enough to do 135 yet, you could start in a rack and just kind of work on that hinge position and then work your way back down to the floor once you're strong enough to do so, okay? But that's basically uh, all the tips that we have for the deadlift. It's a great movement, whether you're a competitive lifter or not. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe for future content, and we'll see you next time.